Good morning or good afternoon, my pre-calculus students. Um, depending on when you're watching this, um, we're just gonna we're gonna do a lesson right now on math modeling. Um, maybe use it when I'm absent. Maybe um, use it as a flipped lesson. But without further ado, um, let's look at it. What math modeling is and how we're gonna use it. Uh, one of the things that's good about math modeling is. Um, we're going to start out pretty simple with a couple easier cases, but we'll use it throughout the class. Uh, it helps us um, predict what's going to happen depending on the situation, depending on the phenomena we're looking at. Is it something simple and easy, like a straight line? Is it something more fancy? We're going to see it all throughout this class. So this is kind of the introduction to what math modeling is. Um, in fact, your cornerstone is a fancy math modeling. And I can see my reflection in my reflection. It's kind of weird. Um, let, let's look at the notes, though. So. So uh, math modeling in general is constructing an equation, making an equation um, to predict future outcomes. So I, I'm going to be given a set of data or some points, and based on that, I, I can figure out what's going to happen moving forward. So um, all the different types we can see, but let's look at the, start with the first one. The first one's called direct variation. Um, a couple of the key phrases you'll you'll look for when you're reading a word problem with this type is um, anything direct. Y varies directly as X. Something is directly proportional to something else. Um, that that kind of keys us into this. And when something is pr directly proportional, it means it changes by the same amount each time. Um, um, we should be thinking like a straight line. Direct variation is another way of thinking y equals mx plus b, uh, with the caveat being that it always goes through the point zero, zero. Um, maybe your bill for iTunes is directly proportional to the number of songs you download. Okay, well, if you download zero songs, then your bill is zero dollars for iTunes. Well, it's the exact same idea. It has to go through zero, zero. And each time you uh, add another song, it increases by the same amount, whatever the cost of downloading a song is. Um, moving forward, um, as soon as we see something directly proportional, we can write what's called a proportionality statement. That's a little alpha, a little Greek letter. It looks like a little fish. Um, from a direct a proportionality statement, we can then write a related equation. We like equations. We're used to solving equations. We get uh, y equals kx. That k is um, a constant of proportionality. It's different for every problem. Um, for us, the way we've been doing some linear stuff, it's just the slope. But um, this is kind of how the problem is going to be set up. Let's do an example and see if we can knock this stuff out. So um, I've, no bells and whistles, no context here, just straight up. Y is directly proportional to X. I am telling you Y and X are directly proportional. Y will be 15 when X is negative 5. Figure out what Y is when X is 25. You can hit pause for a second. Try this problem out. We're going to use the formula right above in gray. Um, if I know what Y is and I know what X is, the only thing I don't know is K. And I can find that constant proportionality. And then once I have the constant proportionality, I have this formula that will help me solve any of these problems. Okay. I'm assuming you may have hit pause, you may not have, but this is how it's going to go down. It says y is directly proportional to x, so we get our same formula every time. Um, we know y is 15 when x is negative 5. We can solve for k. And then once we get k, we have a formula. So here's my formula. Boom. Will help me figure out what any x and any y. I think I said figure out what y is when x is 25. We plug that in there and we're dancing. Very easy concept math modeling. Obviously, this is just the beginning, but um, it's the same idea. Let's try a more stepped up version. Again, I want you to hit pause and try this on your own before you watch me go through the answers. <clears throat> Maybe my handwriting's poor. Let me read this for you. The surplus, the extra amount of foam fingers, is directly proportional to the square of the number of people attending some game. I don't know, a big game, like a Super Bowl or something. There are 1,250 extra foam fingers when there are 50 people in attendance. How many people were there if we had a surplus, an extra amount of 450 foam fingers? So it's the same idea as before. Um, I read the phrase directly proportional to. There are some nuances here. The most common mistake students make is they rip through this as fast as they can, and they miss this kind of thing, the square. It's directly proportional to the square of the number of people. That's why I like to write um, the proportionality statement first. Read the problem, write the proportionality statement with a little fish. So in this case, the surplus of foam fingers is directly proportional to the square of the number of people in attendance at a game. So I wrote my proportionality statement to look like this. The surplus is directly proportional to 
<clears throat> the number of people in attendance squared, the square of the people in attendance. Then to write our little equation, like how I can't solve a proportionality statement, I can change it to an equal sign and add my little k constant. So now proportionality statement, check. Equation, check. We're going to take some of the information given to me in the problem. It said there are 1,250 extra foam fingers when 50 people are in attendance. That's P, that's S, and I can solve for K. Okay, so let's do that. That's P, that's S, I can solve for K. 50 squared, 2,500, divide that to the other side. K is a half. This K constant, this constant of proportionality, the same for the whole problem, is one half. So I can come right back up to this formula, take the K out, and it's one half. And now I have my prediction. I have my working equation. It will work for me or whatever I need to do. It says how many people were in attendance, figure out what P is, if the surplus was 450 foam fingers. So I put a 450 in there for K. Looks something like that. And then I'll solve. I'll multiply 2 to the other side, 900. Take a square root of both sides, plus or minus 30. But in the context of the problem, it does not make sense to have negative 30 people in attendance. So our answer is just 30. Not too bad, not too bad. We did an easy run. We did a slightly more difficult one. Uh, there are other types of relations out there, so let's cover those real quick. The next one is called an inverse variation, or in, two things are inversely proportional. When that happens, their product, if you multiply x and y, it will always be equal to some that k constant we were looking for. Um, I actually don't prefer that method because it doesn't, it kind of deviates from the way I taught the last one. So I'll teach it this way. Here's my proportionality statement. When two things vary inversely, then we'll put the y is inversely proportional to or proportional to 1 over x. And what I was talking about, if you multiply them. Um, here's the equation we will use. So as soon as I see two things are inversely proportional, it's going to be k, some number, over the inverse. And in this case, where one was increasing every time the, the other one was increasing, this one's the opposite. As one increases, the other's decreasing. Notice as x's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, my y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And if you're looking at this and thinking about um, asymptotes, like it's getting closer to something, you're on the right track there. Um, let's go through an example says y is inversely proportional to x, so I know I'm going to write this formula right here. Um, y is 8 when x is a half. Figure out what x is and y is 2. So we can't go straight to the problem. We have to use the information given to me first, the 8 and the 1 half, and figure out what the k constant is, what's going on with that constant proportionality. So I'll write my, set, my <clears throat> proportionality statement. Looks like that. Change it to an equation. Looks like that. Enter my numbers in. y is 8 when x is 1 half. I can solve for k. I'll multiply the 1 half to the other side. Half times 8 is 4. Now that we know the constant proportionality, I can put that right there and solve the problem. Find x when y is negative 2. So we plug those in. Do the switcheroo. x will be multiplied over. And then I have negative 2 times x. Then I'll divide by negative 2. And 4 divided by negative 2 is also negative 2. So we have direct variation we have inverse variation and then the last one I mean in real life how often are just two things related that usually it's more complex than that there are other things um, so we call this joint variation when there are is a third variable or more um, joint variation is just a play on I can mix up any ones I want but um, it looks like direct variation if you have to say two things are three things are very jointly then it'll look like this so here's our example why is jointly proportional to the square of X and the square root of z, again, the most common mistake, students leave these off. Square of x, x squared. Square root of z, square root of z. We make our proportionality statement. Here's the information given to me, first of all. Y is 363 when I have these two things. These data points all will point me towards what k value I need for this particular problem. Then once I have the k value, I can use solve whatever problem they're, they're giving me. So here's the equation. I skipped the proportionality statement here, not even Mr. Edwards. But we knew y was 363 when x was 11, x squared, and z was 81, square root of z. All that stuff that was set up there, you have to remember those here. <clears throat> we can go through and figure out what k is. k ends up being a third. Now that we know k is a third, I can write my working formula, my working equation, and solve whatever I need to solve. It says find y when x is 10, and z is 729. I'll just plug those numbers in there, rip it through my calculator, and you get 900. 
Boom. Notes over. Um, be emailing me questions. Have a nice rest of your day. Peace.